Hey, welcome back. So this is a uh, video supplemental to video number three where we got our uh, imagery from NASA and then we manipulated that imagery and made it into a height map that we can use in Unreal Engine. Some of my students had asked if uh, there was a way to get imagery outside of North America and uh, the process I showed you using um, microdem and microdem only in standalone mode um, Basically, and then of course using the Aldos uh, Pulsar satellite data was kind of a standalone for North America only, uh, as it turns out. So there are other methods, of course, to get satellite data of other parts of the world. And using a software called GDAL as a supplemental software to um, Microdem will do that. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to uh, get all that process. Now, if you missed out on what I'm talking about, here uh, in my... YouTube channel, video number three for landscapes uh, is where I showed you how to do all the manipulation of the NASA imagery. So I'm gonna put in a little supplemental video, this one, to uh, show you how to get other uh, imagery so that you can use it and then you can jump back into video number three and set it up for use uh, inside your video game. So this is just sort of a, a little uh, video for set up for that, okay? So kind of a, a supplemental again. All right, so let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. So here is the website we used. It was ASF, okay, and we also used a software called Microdem, which I'll open in a minute. Um, but what we need to do is we need to go to OSGEO4W. So here's the website for it. Now, GDAL is, if you Google GDAL, you'll see that there are um, quite a few different sites that support GDAL, and if you wanted to know so much more about what GDAL can do, there are tons of uh, tutorials out there because um, it is uh, it's an open source uh, um, software from the Geospatial Foundation, and it's uh, it's pretty cool. You can do a lot of cool stuff with it. Supports Python, and um, again, a lot of tutorials on. It. So, but we're just here, and I'm going to put this link down below in the video description. We're just here to to install. OSGEO4W. Okay, so I'm going to click on it, and um, you can see I practiced earlier. So it would download it, then you can just go ahead and open the file. Okay. Now, what I usually do is I just do an express install. You can go through the process for advanced, but this works just fine. I select press express install, it does the download. All of this will pop up. You can install it, but we're really just after the GDAL by itself. So you can uncheck those if you don't have enough space on your hard drive or you're worried about adding more things you don't use. And then you can just hit the next button and it will install, okay? And it goes pretty quick, okay? And uh, it may take a little longer, it just depends on your processor. All right, so once it's installed, now we're gonna go back and this time instead of using the ASF site, we're gonna use another Earth data site, okay? And this one, I will put the uh, link for it down in the a video below as well. It's uh, search.earthdata.nasa.gov. Okay, just this first part will bring you here. All right, so um, as you can see here on the left-hand side, I'm going to shrink that down a little bit. Over here, you can see the entire world map, and you can pick all kinds of different places uh, to search. And it's left mouse button, drag around, middle mouse button to zoom in and out. Okay, and um, Say I wanted to do some place like uh, maybe Egypt. All right, so once you find a spot that you want to uh, select, you can go ahead and over here on the right-hand side, several different ways of uh, selection. You can zoom in, zoom out down here, different uh, globe types, map types. So I'm going to go ahead and just choose the polygon for my selection. And once um, you find a spot you're interested in, you can kind of just expand it like that. Okay, and then this little window that I shrunk down will pop up and it'll have some choices for you that pop in there. If you ever wanted to clear your search, there's a little eraser right here. You can click on that and that'll clear the search. All right, so a lot of the same satellites pop up on here that we saw in um, our other website and the ASF data search.
But what we're actually looking for is this one right here, this Astro Global Digital Elevation Model, okay? And um, there may actually be more than one type. You can see there's a lot of matching selections up here. But we're just gonna go ahead and start with this one. Now, you that doesn't prevent you from looking at other ones and trying it out and see if it works um, for a higher resolution. These are usually um, lower uh, resolution than the ones that we were using for the North America, but there are some that are mixed in there that are probably higher resolution. And it also depends on uh, what part of the world and what mission this was pulled from. But uh, you can see when I do that, that I end up with several uh, different sections back here. I'm gonna shrink this down again. And so I have a total of six of them. This one right here was kind of that area that I selected. It covers the largest area of it. So I'm gonna select this one as a start. And uh, we may want to change it depending on if, if it has what we want. And you can see right here, um, there is the satellite data. So I'm going to go back here, open this up. And when you select it, it'll highlight in a green box, okay? And you can also select these individually and it'll highlight the box for you as well. So I'm going to download this one, okay? And it's going to download. All right. And now I'm gonna go ahead and open up my GDAL. Okay. And, oh, I'm sorry, not GDAL, MicroDEM. Okay. And then the window will pop up. Now what GDAL does is it is a kind of a database that MicroDEM can correlate this downloaded GeoTIFFs. Um, and that's what I, downloaded from here I, mean, I may not have expressed that but i downloaded the dem.tiff okay so it's a dem tiff and it's going to take that imagery and overlay it over database from gdal and correlate the imagery so that you get your proper height map so if i go here i go to open i'm just going to go ahead since i left it in my downloads i'm just going to pull that one up i'm going to say open okay and it should do something like this, okay? It should um, connect it together automatically. Sometimes you'll get a little pop-up, and this is uh, one of the things I see um, on my network computer at, at uh, work, is, uh, and it has tons of security and filters in it, so that may, might be part of it too, but there'll be a little pop-up window that'll ask you to go find the um, folder for GDAL so that it can correlate it. Uh, it can't find it or something like that. It'll ask you and you say yes. And then there'll be a little pop-up window that'll pop up for you to locate um, your um, your file. And what it is, is on your C drive, you'll find OSGEO4W. You want to select the top level folder for that. Okay. And when you do that, um, it will pop up. And you'll just say uh, yes and okay, and it'll automatically find the folder it needs and the data, and it should open up to look something like this. Now, once it's open, okay, we can go up to the map info, and you can see the resolution that you have here. And it's going to vary depending on what mission it was that pulled this, where in the world it is, um, things like that, uh, how old the data is. And this one, um, we're looking at uh, 26.64 meters by 30.79 meters. You can still use that same process I show you in the video to uh, uh, upscale it to one meter uh, resolution. Now, again, it's not really one meter resolution. All we've done is we've added in pixels every one meter, okay? It's still um, this resolution here. It's just now instead of every 26 meters by 30 meters, there's a pixel. There's just a, an added in pixel every meter. And that takes a little while, depending on the size of your map that you want to do. And then we go through the smoothing process, just like I show you in the video uh, in for video number three. And that can take a while as, as well. OK, but once you've got all that set up, um, it's it's um, easy to put into World Machine, add in some of the detailing back in using World Machine for uh, for things like erosion and stuff like that. And uh, there you go. It's basically a part of the world that you wanted to use for your um, for your game. Okay, so um, again, um, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments section uh, and I will uh, 
get back to you and do my best to try to answer your question, especially if you're having some issues or problems. Now, I don't know um, everything about my, uh, GDAL or Microdem. I know enough stuff uh, to do what I've done with it and what I need for uh, creating games, but uh, I'll do my best to find a solution for you. All right. So again, if you uh, liked what you saw, please like the video, subscribe to Putting on the Fritz 3D Visualization, and to complete this project, make sure you jump back into uh, video number three. I'll see you next time.